Hello guys, welcome to the new section, Protocol Oriented Programming. In this section, we will look at the topics such as Swift as a Protocol Oriented Programming Language, Object Oriented Programming versus Protocol Oriented Programming. Let's start with the first video of this section, Swift as a Protocol Oriented Programming Language. In this video, we will be designing the vehicles in a protocol oriented way. As we did with the object-oriented design, we will start off by looking at a very basic diagram that shows how to design the vehicle types in a protocol-oriented way. Just like the object-oriented diagram, this will be a very basic diagram that simply shows the types themselves without much detail. In this new design, we use three techniques that make protocol-oriented programming significantly different from object-oriented programming. These techniques are protocol inheritance, protocol composition, and protocol extensions. Protocol inheritance is where one protocol can inherit the requirements from other protocols. This is similar to class inheritance in object-oriented programming. However, instead of inheriting functionality from a superclass, we are inheriting requirements from the protocol. One advantage that protocol inheritance has over class inheritance in Swift is that protocols can inherit the requirements from multiple protocols. In our example, the land vehicle, sea vehicle and air vehicle protocols inherit the requirements from the vehicle protocol. It is also important to note that with a combination of protocol extensions and protocols, we do have the ability to inherit functionality. Protocol composition allows types to conform to more than one protocol. In our example, there are some types tank, submarine and jet structures that conform to a single protocol. However, there are also two types, amphibious and transformer structures, that take advantage of protocol composition by conforming to multiple protocols. Protocol inheritance and composition are extremely important to protocol-oriented design because they allow us to create smaller and more specific protocols. This allows us to avoid the bloated superclasses as we saw with the object-oriented designs. We do need to be careful not to create protocols that are too granular because they will become hard to maintain and manage. Protocol extensions allows us to extend a protocol to provide method and property implementations to conforming types. This gives us the ability to provide common implementations to all the conforming types eliminating the need to provide an implementation for each individual type or the need to create a class hierarchy. While protocol extensions may not seem too exciting, once you understand how powerful they are, they will transform the way you think about application design. Let's begin the implementation by creating the vehicle protocol. The vehicle protocol for this example will define a single property named hit points that will keep track of the vehicle's remaining hit points. If you recall from our object-oriented design, we had three methods defined in the superclass that all vehicle types used. These methods were take hit, hit points remaining and is alive. The implementation for these methods would be the same for every vehicle type. Therefore, they are great candidates to be implemented with protocol extensions. This code shows how we would create a vehicle protocol extension and how we would implement these three methods within the extension. Now let's look at how we would define the land vehicle, sea vehicle and air vehicle protocols as highlighted here. There are a couple of things to note about these protocols. The first is they all inherit the requirements from the vehicle protocol, which also means they inherit the functionality from the vehicle protocol extension. Another thing to note about these protocols is that they only contain the requirements needed for their particular vehicle types. The big advantage of using the protocol-oriented design is that it prevents external code from changing the values once they are set, which could introduce errors that are hard to trace. Next, we will look at how we would create types that conform to these protocols. We will create the same tank, amphibious and transformer types that we implemented in the object-oriented design. Let's start with the tank type, as shown here. There are several differences between the tank type defined here and the tank type defined in the object-oriented design.
To see these differences, let's look at the tank type that was defined in the object-oriented design. The first thing that we can see is that the tank type from our object-oriented design is a class, which is a reference type, while the tank type designed in a protocol-oriented way is a structure, which is a value type. Protocol-oriented design does not tell us we must use value types, but it does say that they are preferred. This means that we could define the tank type as a class in both paradigms, and it may be preferable to do so, depending on the overall design of our application. One of the main reasons to choose value types over reference types is safety. If we always get a unique copy of the value type instances, then we can trust that no other parts of our code can change that instance. Another difference between the two of the tank types is the one designed in a protocol-oriented way can use the default initializer that the structure provides, and we are able to define the properties as constants. Since the properties are constants, they can't be changed once they are set. In the tank type from the object-oriented design, we had to override the initializer and then set the properties within the initializer. The properties in the object-oriented design were defined as variables, which allows them to be changed after they are set. One thing that we do not see when we look at the two tank types is that the tank type from the protocol-oriented design contains only the functionality for land vehicles. The tank type from the object-oriented design inherits the functionality and properties for both the sea and air types as well as the land type, even though it does not need that functionality. Now let's see how we would create the amphibious type. Consider this highlighted code. The amphibious type is very similar to the tank type, however, it uses protocol composition to conform to multiple vehicle types. This allows it to have the functionality from both the land and sea types. We will see how we would implement the transformer type. Consider highlighted code as shown here. Since the transformer type can move to and attack from all three terrain types, we use protocol composition to have it conform to the land vehicle, sea vehicle, and air vehicle protocols. Post that, let's see how we would use these new types. As with our object-oriented design, we have the requirement to be able to keep instances of all the vehicle types in a single array. This enables us to loop through all active vehicles and perform any actions needed. For this, we will use polymorphism, just as we did with our object-oriented design. However, with the protocol-oriented design, we will use the interface provided by the protocols to interact with the instances of the vehicle types. This code looks exactly like the code from our object-oriented design. In this code, we created an array that will store instances of types that conform to the vehicle type. The array, in this example, is defined to contain instances of types that conform to the vehicle protocol. This means that we can use the interface defined by the vehicle protocol to interact with the types in the array. Looking at the vehicle protocol, that really is not very useful. However, we can attempt to typecast the instance to see if they conform to a particular protocol. This code is an example you can look out for. In this code, we use a for loop statement to loop through the vehicle's array. We use an as typecast operator to see if the instances conform to one of the protocols, and if so, we print out a message. Accessing the vehicle types in this manner is very similar to how we access them in the object-oriented example. However, what if we only wanted to get one type of vehicle rather than all vehicles? We can do this with the WHERE class. Here is the example that shows how to do this. In this example, we use the WHERE keyword to filter the results of the FOR loop to retrieve only instances that conform to the land vehicle protocol. We can then typecast any instance that is returned from the FOR loop as an instance that conforms to the land vehicle protocol and interact with it using the interface provided by the protocol.